Driving at Home with Avor's housing economist, Claire Losey. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our Driving at Home weekly podcast. I'm Kalea Youngblood, your Chief Marketing Officer here at the Austin Board of Realtors. And I am joined once again with Dr. Claire Losey. Hi, Claire. Thanks for joining us again today. Hi, thanks so much for having me. We're excited because we're going to change it up a little bit this week and actually talk about our weekly market stats. Closed sales were up nearly 20%. Lease is up 10%. Why don't you give us a rundown on what we saw, what we're going to see, and how that compares with the year-over-year comparisons? So just to situate us in the broader context, as we all know, we're in a higher mortgage rate environment, relatively speaking. So when we're thinking about closed sales last week, essentially we're looking at mortgage rates maybe in late August, early to mid-September, so somewhere in the low 7% range. Mm -hmm. But what we actually have seen is that despite the higher rate environment that we're currently in, as Clea said, Closed sales were up nearly 20% on a week-over-week basis last week, so indicating that there is buyer resilience to the higher rates. There's some stickiness there, which is, of course, a good thing for the market. And then closed leases also up about 10%. So overall, what we've seen on a year-over-year basis, if we're comparing last week to the commensurate week in 2022, we are also seeing some resilience in prices among pending sales. So for example, if we look at essentially the commensurate week last year, which would have been October 17th through October 23rd, what we saw with our pending sales data that week is that about 37% of sales would have been for homes under 400,000 versus about 42% last week. And then about 44% of pending sales were priced between 400 dollars and $700,000 this week, last year, versus 40% last week. So again, some relative stickiness with respect to prices despite the higher rate environment. So comparing the commensurate week last year, mortgage rates were hovering in the low 6% range when those pending sales would have been filtering through the market. So in essence, despite the uptick in mortgage rates of you know, at least one percentage point, again, we're seeing evidence of buyer resilience to those higher rates. So maybe buyers are getting creative with their lenders and maybe taking advantage of some of the down payment assistance programs or some of the things that could help combat some of the higher rates to leverage their buying power. That's good news. Right. And I think there's just also broader recognition that the higher rate environment is here to stay, although hopefully we'll see, and there's evidence that we're going to see some alleviation, some moderation in mortgage rates over essentially the first half of 2024, we do know, and I think, again, that there is broader recognition among buyers that mortgage rates are going to remain elevated and we're not returning to a 3% or even 4% environment anytime soon. So maybe that narrative is finally kind of settling in Agents are having a better, easier time articulating that fact to their clients and saying, let's get creative on what our options are. We have more leverage with inventory available in the market right now. We're up to about 4% of inventory, so there's options. So, you know, if you're an agent out there with a buyer, that's the kind of the, the headline or the conversation you should be having for sure. That's great. Well, let's broaden it then. I know you wanted to talk about employment growth and the Austin Round Rock and Georgetown MSA. It outpaced that of Texas and the U.S. in September. Why don't you give us some more information on that? Absolutely. So on a year-over-year basis in September, total non-farm employment growth in the Austin MSA measured 3.3% versus 3.2% in Texas and 2.1% in the U.S., So yet again, Austin outpaced both Texas and the U.S. with respect to employment growth 
and more specifically, the sectors that saw the highest gains on a year-over-year basis were leisure and hospitality coming in at 7.1% year-over-year and mining, logging, and construction, which measured 6.5% on a year-over-year basis. And then the sectors that lagged were, of course, information down 1.3% on a year-over-year basis, and then financial activities at a sluggish 0.5% on a year-over-year basis. We're seeing some moderation in the information sector, just given the slowdown in the broader tech sector and just, you know, kind of catching up with you know, trends, again, in the broader tech market and just a little bit less resilience within that sector to some of the macroeconomic forces that have hit the U.S., for example, higher interest rates, you know, tech firms are just struggling to get the same amount of capital that they were, you know, seeing, especially in 2021, 2022, the early parts of 2022, when it was just much easier for them, again, to to get financing, to get capital. And yet again, Austin, you know, hits the headlines of being one of the cities with the best employment growth and sort of still outpacing the rest of the country with regards to employment. And I think that has maybe to do with the diversity of the employment sector that we have here in Austin. While we are tech heavy, we also see other industries in our region that um, are certainly helping to increase our employment growth and continue to bring jobs to Austin. Yes, we've seen continued high levels, high gains within that mining, logging, and main, uh, mining, logging, and construction sector. So, just growing evidence of you know, of course, more of the rock quarries and um, that kind of that mining activity being concentrated in the hill country and then, of course, along the river and just upticks in that sector especially have been strong over the past several months now. Wonderful. Well, thanks for your insight this week, Claire. We will be keeping an eye out as we approach the holidays and certainly, you know, keeping our members apprised of what we're seeing through the holiday season. Before I go, I definitely want to plug and give everybody a heads up that we are releasing our International Home Buyers Report soon. So please be on the lookout. And Claire, you had quite a bit of uh, research in that report. Can you talk to us a little bit about what our members should expect to see? Absolutely. So some of the highlights include over $600 million in sales dollar volume, essentially equivalent with what we saw in 2022. So Transaction activity among international clients was fairly commensurate in 2023 with that of 2022. And then the top five countries of origin for foreign buyers included India, Mexico, China, Brazil, and Canada. India ranked the top country of origin for foreign buyers for the second year in a row now. And then Lastly, the median purchase price of international buyers actually continued to rise in 2023, measuring over $50,000 higher than in 2022 when it hovered around $515,000. Awesome. It's a great report. And for those of you that might want to dive more into our global program, we have an awesome global ambassador program here at ABOR. They meet quite often. They're a great, fun group of people that love to network and really just fascinating information that comes out of that group with regards to a lot of our alliances overseas and and in neighboring countries. So come join us and check out that report. It should be out in the next couple of uh, week or so. And we'll see you next week. We appreciate you being here and tuning in. Thanks, guys. Take care.